Well, on the episode that I just recorded of the podcast yesterday, I was talking about how in regards to UFC 249, no news is pretty much just as good as good news at this point. And unfortunately, within probably like 12 hours, maybe a little bit more than that, uh, we did get some news on this event. And it's not good news. It's news regarding Khabib Nurmagomedov. This is being interpreted as though Khabib is off the card and that they're now scrambling to find a new main event, whether that's going to be with Tony Ferguson or whether that's going to be an outside fight which could include a Tyron Woodley, Woodley versus Colby Covington fight or a- any other fight outside of that. Uh, they're also talking about bringing in Justin Gaethje, uh, Dustin Poirier has put his name in the hat. A few other guys have as well. I think before I go any further, I think it's really important that we actually read what could be Narangamedov said, or at least the translated version of it. Because I am seeing a lot of people who were making some assumptions that are based off of headlines and not what was actually said. So the quotes here start right here. So it says, this is from Khabib. So he says, we were training in AKA without any information regarding the fight, where and how it is going to happen. Uh, then the UFC told us that the fight 100% is not happening in the States. And they told uh, and they said that 99% it will happen in Emirates, Abu Dhabi. After talking to UFC, we decided to fly over to Emirates a month before the fight. I don't remember the exact date. It was 19th or 20th. So that's March he's referring to. Obviously, we're still in March. I'll have to check, but when we landed in Emirates, we learned that they were going to close borders and no one will be able to leave or fly in with exemption for residents. We had to fly back to Russia. Currently I'm in Dagestan and I'm training and prepping every, preparing every day. Although I don't know what I'm preparing for because after we came to Russia, we also learned that borders are going to be locked. Same like in the States, same like in Europe, Emirates everywhere. The whole world is in quarantine right now. The coronavirus coronavirus pandemic. Oh, actually that's not his quote. Uh, continuing his quote, uh, it says, so now I'm hearing that they are looking to organize it with or without me. Okay, go ahead. And that line right there is, I think, what a lot of people are jumping on. Uh, then he continued, uh, everyone should follow the laws. I'm not against it. I know that fighters need to feed their families and pay their bills. I know how hard it is for the fighter. Unless they fight, they aren't getting any money. I'm even hearing that they are looking for an opponent for Tony because he is in States and I am here in Russia. But I am not here on my own will. UFC told me that this fight 100% isn't happening in USA, and even if it's not happening in Emirates, it will still happen on this side of the Atlantic. We discussed everything with the UFC. By that time, I already spent five weeks of hard training in ADKA. Now, I don't really know what's going on. It's really hard to train and cut your weight when the whole world is locked down and you don't know what you're preparing for, but it's not the first time I faced obstacles in my career. Uh, I think there's a little bit more beyond that. Uh, I guess not. So, So that's what he actually said there. So it's important to note, first off, he didn't say he was backing out of the fight or that he was no longer interested in the fight. Effectively, what what Khabib Nurmagomedov is saying here is that he would like to fight, but based off of a lot of countries closing around the world, he's not sure what is going to be available, and he's not sure if he's going to be allowed outside of Russia. And if he's not allowed outside of Russia and Russia isn't letting people in, then just from a logistical standpoint, he might not be available. He says he's still preparing. He says he would still like to take the fight. Um, but right now, it's going to be a question of whether or not they can make things work. So one of the takes I've seen on this is that this is like an example of Dana White doing a terrible job and how he was talking about how he was going to make this fight happen. And now it doesn't look like it's going to. So what a failure by him. If you take it back just a week or two ago, there's probably about three spots in the world that you would probably want to put could be that could be could possibly go. There's where he was, which was in California. Uh, There's home for him, which is Dagestan. And then there is an an area you could probably say that you think for the most part would be willing to take this fight, willing to bring this fight on. Uh, and in the end, that ended up being uh, the UAE or Abu Dhabi. So for Dana White to say, look, it looks like things are really starting to close down in the UFC or close down in the USA. We don't think that America is the best spot to be, especially not in California, which seems to be an early mover on a lot of this stuff. It's probably best for you to go back to Russia or even head over to the Emirates. I think that's actually a good move by the UFC to to encourage Khabib to do that. Um, so Khabib did go back to Russia. As far as his availability goes, and this is where it gets tricky for me, you would assume for a guy like Khabib, a guy who's a massive Russia, Russian superstar and a guy who's a massive Muslim superstar, either Russia and or um, Abu Dhabi would be great places for him because you'd figure that even if they have laws that are in place for most citizens, they, they could make an exception for a guy like him. I don't know when he was talking about how when he flew over to the UAE and they had to send him back. I don't know what the exact situation was. What, what, I don't know the exact situation there. There are a couple possibilities for what happened there. So one possibility would be that they got there. Um, they were just told, look, we're not taking new people and we got to send you back and that's it. Another possibility would be that he has some connections, maybe like some princes in the air and or some princes who are local to there uh, called him up and like, you know what? Sorry, we'd like to make a exemption for you, but we can't do that either.
if he actually did have some contacts there in, in terms of royalty in the area and they, they were trying to make it work where it's like, okay, can you make an exception for us? And that was turned down. That's obviously going to be a very big problem. Uh, I, I don't know at this point if he's going to be able to travel back there anyway, even if they were to make an exception at this point. But if he wasn't able to get in and he tried to use some connections and that still wasn't enough, that's definitely an issue there. Uh, the other question then would be in Russia, would they be willing to make an exception to bring the UFC in to have a fight there? Would they have it where the UFC is doing this in multiple locations? So maybe for most of the main card, they have one location somewhere in the world. But then for the main event and just the Khabib versus Tony fight, they have that actually physically take place in Russia and they fly Tony out and Putin's okay with it or whoever's in charge of that is okay with it. Is that still a possibility? I'm not sure. Again, that's something they'd have to look into. It does help that Khabib is a massive superstar in Russia. And if anyone's going to get an, ex- get an exemption, it's him. Uh, maybe to get that exemption, they have to test everyone who's going to be involved and make sure that they they aren't positive for coronavirus. I, th- I think one of the things that a lot of people are losing track of here in, in all the panic is that when you hear things like stay at home or avoid large groups, the idea isn't that if you have a large group of people who don't have the coronavirus, that it's just going to like sprout up out of nowhere and everyone's going to catch it. The idea is that if someone does have it, that it's a very transmissible, transmissible disease. But the idea there being that if you have a group of people who are all negative for it, all the tests are very reliable and you can all, you can with, with great confirmation say, look, everyone here is, is fine. It's not as though coronavirus is just going to like sprout out from the heavens and all of a sudden everyone's going to get it. The, the danger with people being in public is that some people might have it without knowing that they have it. Some people weren't tested for it. If they were tested for it, they may have gotten it after the test. And so there's a danger in having large groups of people who are untested or who aren't tested up to date. But if you're able to get this in a controlled environment where everyone is tested and all the tests are up to date, it, it's not as though if your main concern is about a massive spread of the virus, it, it's not as though that can't be mitigated. So it seems like they're there are some ways to make it work, but if they're forced into Russia, if Khabib can't leave, which again, that seems kind of odd for Russia. I can understand not wanting to let people in, uh, but not letting someone like Khabib out sort of seems odd as well. Uh, so again, we'll see if that's something that's that they can work with. Um, but if that's the case, then, and by that's the case, if Khabib is stuck in Russia, if that's the case, it does seem like the UFC's options are fairly limited. I don't know if they're, if Russia would let Tony Ferguson in and let the other people in who would need to set the octagon and people who would have to run production and all that. Um, but it's not as though if this is an event where we're not worried about having a crowd anyway, it's not like the UFC couldn't have like three fights in one location, four fights in another, three fights in one and then one fight somewhere else. In theory, that could happen and that could work. Um, it would be an operations nightmare, but I mean, this is an operations nightmare as, be, as it already is. Uh, the, the question would be is what, does, what do the governments allow? And it seems like every day there are stronger measures being put in place. I heard that Virginia, for example, today just pushed their stay at home order all the way into like June or June 10th. Um, so it seems like as the days go by, uh, the governmental measures are getting a little bit stronger. Now, with that being said, if you're looking at the data, it seems like the the data is, tends to be going in the opposite direction, where at first people were thinking about like 2 million people are going to die, a million people are going to die of it. And all of these really bad doomsday predictions are being scaled back. I know there's a famous one in Europe or in the UK where I think the guy's name is Niall Ferguson, uh, but he had a prediction that 500,000 people would die in the UK and that got scaled all the way back to 20,000. Uh, so we are seeing some scaling back of these numbers. Uh, as far as the countries that are worth noting here, and these numbers, actually, the CDC, I'm not looking for CDC right now, that's just US. Um, this is updated as of March 30th, which is today. If we look at the death rates by country, the three countries that are involved could be, we're actually all pretty low here. Uh, text is kind of small. Uh, they see UAE right here. So they said five deaths out of 611 cases. So it's not as though they have a bad outbreak there. They're just trying to manage what they have right now and not let it get any worse. Uh, Because they have seen it get bad in some other countries. Um, Looking for Russia. USA is right here. They have at 1.8, which is a little bit higher than the CDC number, I think, which is at like 1.7 right now. And then Russia should also be pretty low here as well. Yeah, Russia, nine deaths out of 1,836 cases. Now, again, a lot of these numbers are being reported by the local governments. Uh, At this point, I don't think people trust anything coming out of China because China has reasons to make it seem understated. Is it possible that Russia understates their numbers too? I'm sure that's definitely possible. Uh, is it possible the UAE does that again? I- I'm sure it's possible too, but none of these countries are all, or at least between Russia and the UAE, neither of them are really hard hit right now. It seems like all of what they're doing right now is preventative. So for them, would it necessarily be a bad step if they're like, okay, we can we can make this fight with Khabib, we can either bring him in or we can keep him in and bring a, an opponent in and bring some people in for production as long as we have him rigorously tested and kept separate from most other people. It, it seems like there could be some flexibility there and that's something that the UFC is going to have to handle. Uh, but to me, is it likely that Khabib's going to fight Tony Ferguson on April 18th? Probably not. Uh, but is it still possible? Is the fight off yet? It's not off yet, and it is technically still possible. Still possible, and hopefully they find a way to make it work. 